Good evening, Physics 1 class. Tonight we're going to talk about kinematic equations, or Chapter 2. Then we're going to solve uh, a bunch of problems using those equations. These are probably the most important equations for Chapter 2. So it's important that you know how to use all five of them for the homework. I have uploaded the uh, official notes from Chapter 2. And so I'm not going to go through all of those, but I'm going to attempt to summarize the key points. And I think by doing examples in the problems, um, hopefully it will become clear how to use those. So let's talk about those five equations. What velocity and acceleration mean? What are they? What is acceleration? Well, I suppose we should start by looking at a diagram. Let's say for the sake of argument, we have two different velocities. So we'll call one velocity V1. We'll say that it's five meters per second. The second velocity we'll call V2. This will be three meters per second. Now, uh, we saw that in the last video, when my son was running, he was going at about four meters per second. That's pretty fast. And so let's say for these two velocities, we want to plot their position as a function of time. Okay. Well, we um, let's talk about the equations of motion. So throughout this chapter, we're going to use five really important equations. Some people refer to these as the five kinematic equations. The first one is x equals x0 plus vx times t. We can arrange this and say, move our x0 to the other side and say x minus x0 equals vx of t, or this will be delta x times vx times t. Let's think about this for our Corvette here, okay? So if our Corvette, say in one second, travels, let's say 10 meters, okay, in one second, so it's going 10 meters per second, that's pretty fast. And that is actually going to give us a velocity. That is going to be our velocity. So what we're really saying is here is our position, the position that the car moves in some increment of time, so we'll call this delta x, the change in x divided by our change in t is going to give us our velocity, okay? And 10 meters per second, that is going pretty fast. We'll call this 10 meters. Okay, that's going pretty fast. When you're driving in your car, that's what your speedometer reads. Because your car measures the number of times that the wheels go around. And it knows that if your wheel spins, say, seven times, that is equivalent to moving at 10 meters per second. Then it takes that information and converts it into miles per hour. Okay? That's a speed, or if you're in one dimension, that is a velocity. So in the simplest form, this refers to, this is just velocity. Velocity is equal to our change in position with our change in time, which is where we get this expression up here. Delta x would be our initial position and x would be our final position. That's the first equation. In the second equation, we're going to throw in some acceleration. So now we're gonna have x minus x zero is equal to v x0 times t plus one half a t squared. So this is just the same v as up there 
So if we start off with some initial velocity, we added the V0 here to indicate that this was our the velocity when the time started. It's the same equation up here. But now we're going to have some acceleration. What is acceleration? Acceleration is the change in velocity with respect to time. Because here is a simple truth. If something has a certain velocity, it will continue at that velocity forever, unless something causes it to accelerate or change velocity. Uh, that is Newton's second law. A particle continues in motion unless acted on by an outside force. And force is what gives us acceleration or a change in velocity. Basically, once a particle or anything has a certain velocity, it must continue with that velocity unless something causes it to accelerate. Now, in this chapter, uh, we are going to deal with projectiles or falling objects. And so we could say that our acceleration is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Now notice here that we have meters per second squared. That's because acceleration is equal to my change in velocity with respect to time. Okay, so if we just look at the units of this, so let's just look at our, our units here. Okay? Our units of this are meters per second divided by seconds okay another way we can write this is we can have meters per second to the minus one times second to the minus one then we add those two together and we get meters per second to the minus two or we get meters per second squared that's acceleration what does that mean Let's go back to our car. There's our Corvette. Oh, I don't know what that was. According to car and driver, a Corvette can hit, go from zero to 60 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. That's fast. 60 miles per hour, though, doesn't really tell us a lot in terms of meters per second. So we're going to need to convert this. What does this mean? It means that, wow, there's a huge acceleration. So if you're going from standing still to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, that's going to throw your head back in the seat. So uh, pretty awesome, but it's a huge acceleration. Almost not like my car. My car does not have that kind of acceleration. It's slower. It's, uh, it's not too bad, but nothing like 2.8 se seconds. This means when you punch on the gas, your head is getting thrown in the back of the seat. Lamborghinis are even worse. But let's just talk about our Corvette. So the flea is going to jump up in the air. Here's my flea. And he's going to go up a height of, how high does he go? He goes up 0.5 meters. So y equals 0.5 meters. And then he comes back down. All right. So um, you could try and use the equation y equals uh, y0 uh, plus V0T um, and then minus one half AT squared. And you could say that you could just look at the second half. So you know how high he is, right? So you could say, okay, uh, he goes up to 0.5 meters. And we're just going to look at that second part because the flea is falling out of the air. So how long is it going to take me? 
And so you could say, well, my initial velocity, if he starts up here at the top, his velocity up there at the top is going to be zero. Okay. So y is zero. That's going to be his height. So that'll be h. Okay. Y, his final height will be zero. So that'll be minus one half um, a uh, t squared. But uh, this would give you the right result. But I think what you said was correct that you could just find the time it takes him to get up halfway and then multiply that by by two basically because what is the question what is the question okay so part b how long is the flea in the air from the time it jumps to from the time it jumps to the time it hits the ground okay so basically you did it right find that time and then multiply it by two so yeah I, you did it right so then, yeah, this could just be for half of it. So it'd be h equals one half a t squared. So then this would be t equals two h divided by a. So that's t squared. So then t would just be the square root of two times h over a. And yeah, the time it goes up equals the time it comes down. So I think that's that's how you do it. So two times uh, 0 0.5, so multiply that, divided by 9.8. And then I'll just plug that into Mathematica real quickly. Uh, yeah, so what time did you, did you have a different height or? But because the first okay. one is what is the initial velocity as it leaves the ground? So yeah, in that one, it's going to give you its final height. And um, yeah, and then you need to solve for its initial velocity. And in that one, you could actually use a, a different equation. So um, for part A, what equation did you use? Initial velocity, the final velocity is zero. Yeah, that, that's good. Okay, so sounds like you got that one down pretty well. Um, yeah. 15. Okay, so an object has the acceleration graph shown in figure one. Its velocity at t equals zero seconds is vx equals is, oh, it's velocity at t equals zero seconds is vx equals two meters per second. Okay, so draw the object's velocity graph for the values of t that are separated by steps of two seconds. Okay, oh, uh, okay, so, um, Okay, so then what, how, what, what should we do to solve this? That is absolutely right. What is, so how, how do we put slope into this? What's acceleration? Where does that come from? That is absolutely correct. Okay, so we know that the acceleration is the, um, is the slope of our velocity. Okay, so that means our, so if we have a constant acceleration, then um, what, yeah, so what's gonna happen to our velocity? How could we draw that? Well, well the acceleration is uh, minus two, okay, so, and we know that acceleration equals delta V over delta T, okay? So, and this would basically equal, yeah, so it'd be, it'd be like, uh, yeah, so acceleration equals delta V over delta T, then, uh, so what should we put on our plot there? I think, I think that's right, because it says at T equals zero, 
Vx equals two meters per second. So yeah, your starting point then is gonna be, uh, do you draw zero equals two? Okay. Then, uh, so our slope is minus two. Um, what should our value be? So let's say, here's our equation. So, so V has to equal, um, yeah, so this will be A times T. This is the equation that we're, we're plotting basically, right? And what is our acceleration during that time? So we're over here and v, uh, A equals negative two. So this will be minus A times T or minus two times T, right? As our, um, yeah, our, uh, we'll have V equals minus two times T plus two. So if T equals two, this is a two here, that's a two. That'll be minus four plus two. So this one should actually be up there at minus two, right? So this should actually be, this should actually be two there. And then the next one, if T equals four, that'll be minus eight uh, plus two, so it'll be six. Is that, do you see what? How, um, why that is in this area of when my, what's my acceleration right there? So V equals T and then minus six, right? That, that's our, um, well, we don't, so this, so minus six would be the, the, um, that would be the X intercept for our line, but we don't know what the x-intercept is. So we just need to, our slope would be, what would our slope be? It would be one. positive one, right? Okay, so let's go. Let's do this. So at six, at t equals six, then we have our slope, which is gonna equal one. So then we would go, for every second, we would go up one. So at seven, so, oh wait, we're missing a point here. Oh no, we're doing this point, sorry, I'm confused. Okay, so at, at seven seconds, it should be right there in the middle. And at eight seconds, if our slope is one, then for two seconds, we're gonna go up two, right? Mm -hmm. So this point would be, um, would be, it should be four, right? Oh, okay. Well, I guess we can just make some double points here. We'll just go four and we'll, we'll put these all at the same place. So then they just disappear. Okay. <laughs> I guess we can do that. Okay, so we have, and this should be six. Oh. Oh, wow, I think I really messed this up somehow. Well, anyways, <laughs> you, well, I'm going to reset, I'll reset it, okay. So the first one should go at two meters per second, okay? The second one, so t equals two, should go at, we said minus two, right? The next one should go here at minus six. And the next one should go here. All right, now what about the next part? So now we have a, so at eight, what should my, what should my velocity be? I think that is right. And then at 10, it looks like the, our slope is still two. So it'd be over and up two. Okay. So is that what you got? 
Um, if it if it won't let you do it, then send me an email and I can reset the problem for you. Do you have a limited okay. number of tries, or does it let you do as many times as you want? It's limited. We get six tries, oh, I think. Okay, six. Is it. All right. So, which one do you want to look at now? Okay, a light rail passenger train that provides transportation within and between cities, speed up and slow down with nearly constant and quite modest acceleration. Train travels through a congested part of town at seven meters per second. Once free of this area, it speeds up to 13 meters per second in eight seconds. The edge of town, the driver again accelerates at the same acceleration for another 16 seconds to reach cruising speed. Okay, so what is the final speed? Oh, okay. All right, so we need to read it carefully. This part will be squared. Okay, so it looks like that will be, give us 0 0.048 meters. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, maybe. I don't know how. Yeah, I got something similar to that. My numbers are just a little bit different. Oh, okay. All right. So that gives us our distance of 0.48 meters. But now, how do we get its final velocity for the part where it's acceleration accelerating? How do we get its, its velocity for that part? Um, could we? That is that is actually that is one of the equations. So we'll have uh, v f minus v zero equals a times t, and what's our initial velocity going to be? We said it was going to be zero, right? Yeah. yeah so we'll have v f equals a t. So our acceleration times time, so it'll be 240 meters per second times 20 times 10 to minus three seconds. That is, this is for the time, we're still doing the accelerating part because now we need to find okay. out what's the, what's the final velocity gonna be after it's done accelerating. How fast does the chameleon's tongue get end up going? And once we once we have once we know the distance and the final velocity, then we can move on to the second part of the problem. But this is still the first okay. part of our problem. So if I go, if and then I have all the stuff in Mathematica here already, so I can just copy and paste that. I'll get rid of the five, and I'll get rid of this two here. And if I want to, I can even Mathematica is really nice because I can even do units here. I want to get super fancy, and then this is oh, and I I messed I messed up the units. Uh, so you still have to put in the units correctly. That should be seconds, and then my time here that's microsecond. Okay, so if I do that, wait, that's oh, okay. It looked really similar to the other answer. It's still, it's still got the four eight in it, but it's now our final velocity. Wait, is that right? Oh no, I put a decimal place in front of it. <laughs> oh, that's why. Oh, I was gonna say, I was like, there I have a go. different power of 10 than that. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it must be going faster than that because, yeah, okay, that's more reasonable because if it was less than a meter per second, I mean, that would be barely, okay. So this is going to give us our final velocity for that part will be 4.8 meters per second. Okay, so that's the, that's the first part of our problem. Now we got to, now we'll go to the second part of the problem. And the second part of the problem says, let's go back to our problem here. All right. So it says, um, during this total time, 50 milliseconds. Okay. How far does the tongue reach? Okay. 
So for the last part, it says, then travels at a constant speed for another 30 milliseconds. Okay, so now, all right, now we've got our velocity. And so the, this final velocity here, that's gonna be our initial velocity for the second part. Or, well, it's just our, it's a constant velocity because it doesn't change. Okay, so how do we find the distance for this part, second part here? Yeah, we could, so we could use the one where we have, let's say, delta x is equal to our initial velocity times t plus one half a t squared. Yes, yeah, so you, in effect, you can use this equation. But in the second part, what is our acceleration going to be for the part where it's at a constant velocity? It's going to be zero. So that means that this term here is going to be equal to zero. That's just going to go away. And now for the second part here, um, we'll have, our, we know what our initial velocity is. It's the final velocity from the last part, so it'll be this part right here, okay? And so we'll just say times t is going to give us our distance. And our, our t, so now we have 4.8 meters per second times our t, and that is going to be 30 milliseconds, so 30 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, okay, and that will give us the second half of our distance. So I'll put this in, I'll say, so 4.8 meters per second times 30 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And that'll give us, um, now you have, do you have different nu numbers for your problem? Yeah. Okay. So I got an answer similar to that. Okay. So that'll give us delta X for the second part will be 0 0.144 meters. Okay. So going back up here to the first part, we just found for the second part of the problem over here, this distance here is equal to 0 0.144 meters. And then the first we found before, while it's accelerating, uh, we found a distance for that part to be 0 or 0 0.048 meters. So this is up here, this will be 0 0.048 meters. So that's uh, my distance for the second part there. So now if I add these two distances up, that should tell me the total distance that the tongue traveled to the insect. Does that help? Okay. Three and 24. Okay. Um, oh, did we already talk about, now did I send out an email to everyone about this one? I don't remember if I put this in the math video or not, but um, the problem with this this one is that it doesn't really. I don't. I think there's some information missing because it says in a 500 meter race, the athletes run 12 and a half laps. Okay, right? so and each lap is 400 meters. Okay, so Kara runs the race at a constant speed of 17.5 minutes. Okay, then Hannah runs the race at a blistering 15.3 so fast that she actually passes her. Okay, so then it asks, how many laps does Hannah run when she passes Kara? Well, you actually have no idea when they started. And if they started at the same time, then they would never pass each other, right? So I, I think mm -hmm. that they, uh, they actually uh, left out some information. Um, and I'm not sure. Oh, actually, I made a plot of this. Um, would you like to see the, the thing I made? Okay. So oh, sure. here on the screen, you can see I've plotted their two, um, their two times. I figured out their, their velocities here, and then I, uh, I divided that by meters. So this is basically V times T, which will give me their distance, okay? 
Okay. So these are for the two runners. And I show here that if they start at the same time, uh, one is always ahead. The fastest one is always ahead. Okay. But if I then say, let's make the slower one start a little bit ahead. So we'll say plus maybe 200 seconds. Oh, that's then she never catches up. Let's say plus 20. Oh, see, then. So see, if, if the slower one starts first, then the two lines intercept, right? So if you figure out their velocity, and if one, say, started a minute sooner, then they can, one, the one can pass each other. But uh, based off the, prob the information and the problem there, I don't think we have enough information to actually solve that one. So um, also I was, I, I don't remember if I put that in the math video, but I was, I definitely was gonna talk about it. All right, so what was the other, the last, you said there was one more problem? Okay, so scientists have studied two species of sand lizards, the Mojave fringe-toed lizard and the western beaver-tailed lizard. To understand the extent to which the different structures of the two species toes are related to their preferred habitats, fine sand for the Mojave lizard and coarse sand for the zebra-tailed lizard. Um, shows, figure one shows a simplified velocity versus time graph for the Mojave fringe lizard. Okay. So estimate how far it travels in the first 50 milliseconds. Okay, so that's from zero to 50 right there. Oh, and we've got our, we've got our velocity versus sign. It looks like there's a constant uh, velocity. No, wait, no. Sorry, it's not a constant. What's constant right there from zero to 50? The acceleration is constant in that part um, because um, this is a plot of velocity versus time. And it looks like at least from zero to 50 that it's got a constant slope. So we can find its acceleration. So what is its acceleration okay so i'm going to draw i'm going to i'm going to copy this down onto my piece of paper we'll just look at the first part here because that's the only part that we care about for this so it'll be from zero over here to 50 milliseconds and then our velocity will be zero no it'll be it'll be I'll put here. 0 0.5 and then up here it'll be 1 and this is velocities in meters per second okay so we go from 0 over here to 50 and at 50 milliseconds do they get up to 1 no they don't they don't don't make it up to 1 but they almost make it to 1 about right there but not quite so what number What's its final velocity? What does that look like to you at uh, 50 um, I said 0.75. Okay, so 0. 0.75. That's pretty precise, 0. 0.75. How confident do you feel that it's 0. 0.75 and maybe not 0. 0.8 or 0. 0.7? 8? We'll say point. Yeah, that's better. Yes. Okay, so in this time, what's the slope? Because we want to find our acceleration. So what's the slope of our velocity graph for that? It would be 16. So you have um, the acceleration is equal to what? How would you calculate that? So you had a uh, change in velocity was, you said 0.8 meters per second. Mm -hmm. And then what's our change in time? Mm 
Okay, so we've got 0.8 meters per second. And then this whole thing is going to be divided by 50 times 10 to the minus 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, so yeah, okay, you got 16. Okay, so A is equal to 16 meters per second squared. Great. All right. So then how, and it wants to know how far did it travel during that time? So what would we use to find the distance traveled? We've got our acceleration I... squared plus VI squared equals, what did you say it was? plus 2a delta x. Okay, so we want to yeah. find delta x. All right, so yeah. 0 0.8 meters per second squared. What's our initial velocity? Zero, then we have two, and then what's our, our acceleration? A second squared times delta x. Okay, so then we'll say delta x is equal to 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. That was our velocity. Okay. Um, then this will be times 1 over 2 times 16 meters per second squared. All right, is that what you had? Yeah, okay. digits and it could be. Yeah, because um, it's hard to, from a graph like that, it's hard to be that accurate because I, I don't trust myself. So, and it's, it's just hard to, to tell. So, you know, when you're doing your measurement, that's always something you have to take into account. Okay, so yeah, what did you get? I got, um, what was your final answer? Point zero two, and then our unit is meters. And let's submit it. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we did it in meters, but I guess they would take centimeters as well. Okay. Well, that that seems okay. All right. So. All right, so do you have any other questions or? Thank you, like and subscribe down below.